come again. God bless you. Hallelujah. Remember our topic last time, and I promise that you continue today, is root to blessing. Root to blessing. Not just blessing, the root. Now, remember, I promise that we will continue the Genesis chapter 39, and we, we were able to know Joseph, who had a dream of being elevated in blessing. People sold Joseph in opposite direction. An elevated person with kingship favor is being sold to be a slave by man. You could have landed into that. Some people who are poor, serving in some of these companies, getting very little income. That's where society has put you. But I would like you to know this. You need to arise now in your dream so that the dream you speak and you break the yoke of the devil, the yoke of your tribe, the yoke of your personality, and the yoke of men around you. Yes, people think you can only earn 200, maybe $200 in a week. But I'll tell you, God has his own purpose, plan, and standard. That's why they sold Joseph to be a slave, but God brought his standard. If you are vision bearer, you are dreamer, God has put in you a revelation of purpose and a plan. You should know the God of that dream. If you keep the fellowship and active work with God of that dream, you are becoming great very soon. I declare that by the mouth of God. Now we, the Bible says, Joseph was a successful man. And if you check Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 and 3, it says, And the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hands. And then the master, he made him overseer of his house. And all that he heard, he put under his authority. Those are two, three levels. Remember, Genesis 26, verse 13, The man began to prosper continued to prosper until he became prosper. Three stages. Look at now the same with Joseph. Yes, the first one, he was a successful man. And, and number two, whatever he laid head on prospered. And number three, until he was made the overseer of everything. I pray if the three stages worked in Joseph, if the three stages worked in, in Isaac, I now by the authority of the living God and the blood of Christ remove you from stagnation and I now falsify by God's authority put you into a progressive life of prosperity. Like Isaac began to prosper, continue to prosper, become very prosperous. Like Joseph, you are a successful woman. Number two, whatever you lay, you are a successful man or woman. Whatever you lay hands on is pro prosperous. And until the world will allow you to lay hands on everything. And God will bless you. When you get that level, what the devil wants to kick away from you is the God of your dream. And men and women church, please know the secret of your blessing. Keep, keep the fellowship, keep the identity, keep the sign, keep the favor, the presence of God of your dream. How does the certified target is that? If you check Genesis chapter 39, verse 7, I, I said verse 7 has a unique statement. And after it came to pass, after these Things. Which things? After it was confirmed, you are prosperous. After it was confirmed, the favor of blessing is with you. After it was confirmed that whatever you do with your hands prospers, Satan would like to attack using what John said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. What is in the world is 
the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Any prosperous person must pass this test. When you are blessed, you attract people. People admire you. It's only you who know. Whatever people see around me has a secret in the God of my dream. But when you appreciate people, people come. And sometimes when people come to you, what they present is the last. People admire you. When you become prosperous, women will like to, to, to have friendship with you. Yes. If you don't control yourself, your feelings, your rise and lack control. Right in your body, you have characteristics of fall. Your body has Adamic nature. We inherited characteristics of fall in our body from our forefather, first father Adam. Actually, today is more complicated. The more we live, the more genetically complicated and corrupt our bodies become. The more we have developed complicated sin and evil. You know, uh, sometimes I, 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 I tend to think, after God chased, uh, threw out Adam and Eve from the garden, and, and these people are blessed with Cain and Abel, I, I, I ask myself, Cain murdered Abel. Who taught him how to kill? As we live, people are discovering yet more deep evil. And they want to do it. Especially with the current revolution of right, self-right. My life, my clothing, my feelings, my desire. That you can find your husband fornicating, committing evil. And in some places you can't react. It's, uh, they say it is his right. You find your wife fornicating. It's her right. No, we can't say that, friends. We have bought the doctrine. The Bible says in First Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, uh -huh, chapter 4, First Timothy chapter 4, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to the deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons. Part of the doctrine of demon is extreme worship of feelings, claiming it is my right, my right, my right, and I can do what I want. And you know in our body, Adamic nature, the body is cleaving for yet more chances of lust. The other day they had bestiality. Now they have bestiality. You know, people are complicating and it's becoming more evil. People want to do sex in yet more complicated demonic way. Bible says people will follow the deceiving spirits and you take heed to the doctrines of demons. We need to be very careful of what the Bible says, the last of the eye. Adam and his wife fell in the three ways. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. What Adam and Eve used to call death because of lust, because of lust and heeding, heeding. It's about heeding to the doctrines of demons, listening to the devil, and not rebuking the devil, listening. The devil was able to introduce a scheme and he said, you will not die. When God says you will die, the devil comes and says you will not die. Deception. Changing the doctrine from what it says to the opposite. And the Bible says the woman looked at the fruit. That fruit that God had forbidden. And so how it will make her great last of the eye. And she looked again. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, she was able to, it was present for food. And finally, she looked at it again and felt it will make her great 
Because when she eats, she will not worship God. She will be like God to worship herself and to be adored. And that's where now majority of the doctrine of demons emanate from. And that's why now when you become blessed, the three tests will wait for you. And that's why the Bible says, after these things, which things? Confirmation of blessing. Confirmation of the dream of your life. Confirmation of how God loves you. After these things, what happened? The, that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. This, is, this kind of lust is something that is so direct. Some people who lust after a sister or a brother who already is getting blessed and it's evident that the dream of God for blessing is so clear. They don't just tell you, I love you. They say, I want to, I won't need you in bed. And now the Bible says, uh, Joseph said to a woman, but Joseph refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. Verse 9. There's no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you. But you. Why? Because you are his wife. One thing you need to do to people who want to bring a loud evil. Bring them to their right senses. Woman! Don't forget. There's God in heaven. Man, don't forget. I've got to honor. Don't forget you are a married man. You are somebody's wife. Don't forget you are a young girl. Under the rule of God. The creator of your body. Bring people to understanding. Remove anybody who is tempting you. Remove from the world of lust. Do not promote it. Tell them. Even if we are alone in this room for several days, I cannot touch you. Yes, I have bought like other people, but I'm an overcomer. I have destiny in heaven. I must, after this body is dead and it decays, I must secure a place in heaven. Number two, my body is temple of God. And the, it's Adam, the Holy Ghost. And I'm saved not by law, but even by transformation. I don't want, I hate immorality. Number three, tell them. Remind them their status. You are married. Stay that way. Joseph said, you are his wife. It must depend that way. You are his wife. Men who are getting blessed, women who are getting blessed, overcome the stage of lust. If blessing are to be long lasting. We don't want to see brothers. When you get rich, you are some millions, you are touching women all over. Just because they are desperate, seeking for your guidance. Yes, yes, I said to you, there's, there is very painful life after that. After you are, uh, after this, if you're not careful, if you're not careful, do not lose the dream. Do not lose the God of your dream. Joseph said, You are his wife. You need to know that. The Bible says, Number two, how can I do? How can I do this great? wickedness and sin against my God. I want every man and every woman to memorize this verse and make it your verse or a statement in your mouth, in your body system, in your hands, in your memory, in your imagination. It says, how then can I do 
this great wickedness and sin against God. Any businessman have that statement in your mind. Yes, you are being tempted. But say, how can I do such great wickedness and sin before God? I can't. Practice that. Because if you pass the test of the last of the eye, last of the flesh, and pride of life, you are going to leave an inheritance to your children. You are going to retire peacefully and prophetically. I can imagine when you be old, although you not be able to move around, your health will still be healing. We will be inviting you to bless our youth. We will be inviting you to share with us the dream and how you overcame. I say to you, friends, in the name of Jesus, this is an aspect of root to blessing. Keep your dream. Keep the God of your dream. Overcome the test for prosperity. Last of the eye. Last of the flesh and the pride of life. This is a very strong attack. Satan really waits for you there. When you overcome it, Joseph over overcame it. But this woman accused Joseph wrongly. Where in heaven there was announcement. A vision bearer, a dream bearer has overcome. On earth, there was deception. Where in heaven, they wrote news. Joseph, a hero of faith. On earth, through deception of Potiphar's wife, it was written, Joseph, Joseph, the rapist. Don't worry. As long as you keep the dream and the God of your dream, you overcome. He was put into prison, dungeon. That's when, as he suffered there, but still, he knows, I'm in this prison, in this prison, but I still have the dream, and the dream giver. That is very, very important. If you check the Bible, the Bible says, uh, well, he was in the prison. The master, the master, the, the whatever, the prisoner leader, you may check that later. Uh, uh -huh. But that is, uh, that is Genesis chapter 40, verse 5, verse 4. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Uh -huh. check, check other details. Mm-hmm. What really happened? Uh, if you check in uh, in Genesis that the ninth verse twenty nine, I like I like us to compare two things. If you read Genesis that the nine, verse two, as Joseph was sold to Potiphar as a slave, what brought significant change is that the Lord was with Joseph. And because the Lord was with Joseph, he was a successful man. Now, if you go now to his life in prison, the same thing, verse 29, verse 21, Genesis 39, verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. Never lose the dream giver. He will always propagate and make the dream fruitful. And the Lord with Joseph showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of prison and the keeper of the prison committed in Joseph's hand all the prisoners who are there in the prison whatever they did there it in the prison whatever they did there it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. I would like, us, I'd like to compare two things that continue to be with Joseph in every stage of life. 
whether in prison or whatever. While in Potiphar's house, the Lord was with him. That is Genesis 39, verse 2. The Lord was with him. And because the Lord was this, was this, was this, was with him, he was successful. And verse 3 says, And God made all he did to prosper in his hands. That's very important. If you check verse 6, it says, He was so blessed that the Potiphar left everything under him. He did not even care about the details of his, his estate and his house. It was all under Joseph. When Joseph was in prison, the same repeats itself. It says in, in verse, in verse 21, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Number two, in the sight of the chief prisoner, commissioner of prison, Joseph had so much mercy, favor. Remember, God showed Joseph people bound to him. Not because they are worshiping him, but because he is so blessed and he can only bless. Look at this issue now. The prisoner, the leader of prison, surrenders all his work to Joseph, trusts him so much that he doesn't even have to supervise Joseph. And the Bible says again, if you check very well, in verse 23, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. The dream of God will give you significant signs that will go with you in every stage. It doesn't matter where they take you. They cannot miss the three signs. And the Lord is with you. And number two, whatever you lay hands on prospers. And number three, they will be forced to keep everything under your herd and leave it to you because of God's favor. I release that on you. I release that on you now. It will happen to you. That is the route to prosperity. I know sometimes we just pray for you for prosperity, but I am declaring today the route to prosperity. The Lord will bless you so much. Now, you, there are several things you notice in the scripture. If you read Genesis chapter 40, you know while, while Joseph was in prison, because the Lord was with him, I want to tell you something else that we are selfish. The gift of interpreting dreams surfaced was manifested in Joseph. I said to by God's grace, there's a place in your dream you reach where God will give you a gift that you make way for your dream. The gift of interpreting dreams that Joseph exercised in prison made way for his dream. I declare to you very soon, if you don't defy yourself, God will bless you with a gift that you ultimately make the final level of your dream to be uh, unveiled. That's how Joseph landed before Pharaoh. As Pharaoh said, now I saw a dream. Seven fat cows and seven very thin cows. And Joseph said, now, Mr. King, the God of heaven gives interpretation. There will be seven years of mighty bumper harvest. And there will be seven years of extreme dryness, drought, and famine in this land. You need to get people to take care, to keep food. And Pharaoh said, who else can do that? Who else has that favor except you? And Joseph became prime minister. What took Joseph from prison to becoming prime minister is the dream that materialized. The God of dream. And the gift that made way for the final part of his dream. That's where God is taking you from today. I release this anointing on you in Jesus Christ's name.
Amen.